Um, hi, everyone. Um, thank you for joining this talk. My name is Yi Wei Shang. I'm a PhD student in the Marine Biology and Biological Oceanography program at USC. My advisor is Dr. Sergio Sanudo Wahelmi. Today, I'm happy to talk about my summer research at USC Wrigley Institute, which is the effect of sunlight on the persistence, stability, and decomposition products of various B vitamins in seawater. So in this talk, I will try to answer these questions and show you the firsthand preliminary results I just got in. First of all, uh, what are B vitamins? So this upper left panel shows the, their structures from vitamin B1 to vitamin B12. They are a set of essential coenzymes required in most important central metabolic pathways. And uh, they are especially important for marine phytoplankton at growth factors. So that known for decades, marine phytoplankton and bacteria can form an interdependence, an interdependent relationship by the act green relationship, um, just like this. So um, we, we call them act green relationship because they, they exchange this essential metabolites as a currency to support their growth and um, yeah, their life to, to be functional. And for humans, we will get anemia. Yeah, everybody knows that. We will get anemia if we had a deficiency of vitamin B12. So that's why we have all these vitamin B, uh, B vitamins supplements. So, um, and the B vitamin deficiency not only impacts the human body, but also influence all the organisms in the environment. Earlier this year, LA Times just reported a vitamin B1 deficiency caused salmon death in California. Vitamin B1, also known as the thiamine. As you can see in this picture, the uh, salmons that, that were injected with thiamine, vitamin B1, can grow better and have larger size. And what's important is more and more thiamine uh, deficiencies has been recorded worldwide, scientists believe climate change can be disrupting the availability of vitamin. So something is changing now. Oh, okay. Mm. So why my research is important. You know, uh, what's funny is until now, after decades of studies showing that vitamins are essential for marine life of all kinds, we still don't know how long B vitamins can persist in the ocean. Therefore, my research will enable us to answer, so for example, for how long the different B vitamins are and some of their chemical congeners are stable in seawater. Like, do they have the best before date? Um, and uh, so what, what is the impact of sunlight on the avail uh, stability and chemical transformations of these important growth factors? So like, will they get sunburn? Yeah. So mm, meanwhile, on a broader scale, this study could give us hints on the availability of B vitamins in the future ocean. With the increased light intensity because of the depletion of the ozone. So will this affect the bioavailable time of various vitally important B vitamins in the future is a big, um, like a fundamental question that needs to be addressed. So yeah, here is my research at their USC Wrigley. And um, Wrigley Institute has immediate water access, uh, immediate seawater access and large incubation, large volume incubation tanks and is easily accessible, which allows me to conduct a bioassay experiment of this scale. You see that this is a large incubation tank. And of course, we have the best view on Catalina, yeah. So this slide shows the experimental design of my experiment. Yeah, we collected the seawater, this 40 liter seawater from SPOT, the San Pedro uh, Ocean Time Series, and um, then filter and autoclave the seawater and uh, to rule out any biotic or abiotic factors. After that, I added various B vitamins into this 
treated seawater to have an initial concentration. So we call this a uh, spike. And after all this, I aliquot the treated seawater into incubation bags, which contains um, the light bags and the dark bags. Uh, so the dark bags is just like uh, the control bags. So aliquot them into different bags and then put them into the incubation tank that I just showed you. So finally, after certain sampling intervals, like, so I set the sampling intervals as uh, six hours, 12 hours, that's two days, uh, three days and five days. So ultimately the last sample will be collected on the 30th day. So um, after all these, I will take all the samples back to our lab in the main campus for further analysis, I will I'll be using the state of the art LCMS to identify and analyze the compounds in the seawater. So to determine the concentration and uh, the chemical congeners in the treated seawater. So yeah, I will show you some preliminary results I just got in this week. So this is uh, the variation of light intensity throughout the experiment and also the temperature. So as you can see, the, there is a nice like DO pattern of the temperature that's co-vary with the uh, uh, light intensity. So blue line indicates the light intensity. As you can see, the highest light intensity reaches about uh, 40,000 lumens per square meter, um, Catalina, yeah. So next slide. Um, so I just finished the, the first round of my measurements this week and uh, generated this result. As you can see, so in this figure, the X axis is the days of incubation and the Y axis is the axis is the percentage of vitamin B12 left in the bags. So this is like a decay curve, as you can see that. Mm. So the half-life of vitamin B12, so the half-life half life or half-time is uh, um, vitamin B12 that's uh, only like 50% left in the bag is, about, is around one day. And there was a loss of 70% of vitamin B12 in like three days. This is a dramatically decreasing of, the, of this compounds. And then, about 15% in the following two weeks that remains stable for the rest of the experiment. So this is interesting that can tell us the, the you know, quantitatively tell us about the, the degradation of this uh, vitally important B, B vitamins in, in water. So with that, I will summarize my talk as follows. So this is the first experiment to study the stability of the B vitamins and their transformation products under the surface ocean water conditions. Yeah, so we are mimicking the actual like seawater environment in the incubation tank. So based on the preliminary results, the half time of vitamin B12 is around one day to abiotic degradation, suggesting that there is a very rapid cycle between producers and consumers of this vitamin in the ocean. So that's all I have for today. And with that, I want to thank all the faculty and staff members in USC Wrigley for hosting me and providing me help so that I can finish my experiment during this trying time. Yeah, so this work is founded by Wrigley Marine Science Center Summer Fellowship. And below is my contact information. If you have any questions, please reach me. Please feel free to reach me out. Yeah, thank you. That's my presentation for today.